Okay, so let's let's see. Uh, let's just uh, try to code it up pretty quickly. Uh, so this is a uh, let's uh, let's actually copy what we had before in lecture three. I think we coded up uh, DDT heat. Let's copy this to our lecture four, and let's modify it to DDT uh, advection. Okay, so I think it'll give me a warning unless I change it to advection. Uh, did I call it advection? Yeah, advection. All right. So we have this global variables. Oh, actually it's the same. We just need to construct the A differently, right? Okay, so let's make a N equal to 10, just as in last case. X would be equal to Oh, didn't have the order complete link space of 0 to uh, 0 to 1 and plus 1 and the dx would be equal to x2 minus x1 so in order for us to construct the matrix uh, let's just uh, the let's see let's let's take us uh, take a look at the matrix form right so we haven't done that yet so so if you if you write down ddt of u uh, let's actually look at a periodic domain in this lecture so so this is x0 and xn minus 1 and xn would be actually the same as x0 so we don't have to solve it uh, in duplication we just have u0 un minus 1 right because un would be exactly the same as u0 so the ddt of that is going to be equal to minus of big u times this differential operator so minus big u times some matrix times u0 to un minus 1 and the matrix does it have any diagonal components no, diagonal has no contribution. And uh, uh, which one should be... Uh, so does the upper diagonal have positive coefficients or lower diagonal have positive coefficients? Lower diagonal have uh, negative coefficients, right? Because this is contribution for, uh, into the lower diagonal. It's the effect of uh, um, the previous grid point, which is lies the previous grid point lies on the upper side of this vector uh, so so basically you, you multiply this you rotate it and it should be on the lower side so this is negative minus 1 divided by 2 delta x minus 1 divided by 2 delta x we have zeros on the diagonals and on the upper diagonal we have positive 1 over 2 delta x so let's construct this matrix. Oh, uh, I forgot. Also, because we have periodic domain, what is supposed to be here, which is minus two, uh, one, minus one over two delta x, is going to be up appearing here, right? And what's supposed to appear here, what which is positive, is going to be appear here. So let's construct the matrix according to that. So first of all, we use the diagonal trick with ones a minus uh, in this case, the number of grid points. The number of grid point is n, n in total, right? The upper and lower diagonal is going to be minus 1. With 1, so that is going to be, let's say, divide by 2, divide by 2 times delta x. So let's look at our variable a. So we get the positive uh, numbers on the upper diagonal. So a is going to be equal to a minus, uh, copy the whole thing, except for this is going to be minus 1. We are shifting the diagonal with uh, minus 1 shifts. So we get the minus 5s over here. And now we are going to explicitly, explicitly set this one, which is row 1, column end, which is the last column, is going to be 1 divided by... Oh, it's, it's one, uh, minus 1, sorry. Minus 1 divided by 2 times delta x. And uh, a of n and 1 is going to be plus 1 over delta, 2 delta x. So that's what we have here. So we have the matrix. 
and uh, what else uh, the B I think just uh, needs to be ones uh, zeros and and one right so that's uh, we don't have any boundary condition that it's going to contribute to the solution also we don't have any source term if we have source term the source term is also going to appear in B okay uh, and let's also use our old initial condition u is going to be exponential of uh, minus x minus 0.5 square divided by 0.1 square and uh, just to make sure we have a right initial condition yeah that looks familiar okay and uh, because we don't want to solve the last xn which is the same as the as x0 we want to make x0 is equal to x from 1 to n minus 1 and uh, my x uh, sorry not x uh, u0 my u is also a row vector so let me transpose it to get a column vector as the initial condition for od45 so let's start od45 uh, the function is ddt at vection time span let's also solve it for one time units and uh, u0 oh i forget the global thing again uh, a b and uh, the a b and uh, uh, oh okay so let me modify this so we don't want a K, we have a minus capital U instead, right? Okay, so here A, B and capital U. And uh, okay, so let's go to history and uh, redo everything we have done. So A is equal to that, B is equal to that. So let's evaluate this. Now we have A and B, let's set capital U to Let's start with one, okay? So let's do this again, and we have the solution. So let's plot x, uh, I think from one to n minus one because the solution only lives there, and the uh, u. So that is what our solution looks like. Uh, so maybe let me plot it. Uh, let's let's uh, look at it using a slightly better way. So okay, so let's let's actually animate it to see what 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 we get. So let's make a loop. For t goes from uh, uh, for t goes from zero. So let's set our delta t to be 0.1. So this delta t is not a time step size for time integration, but the time step for our animation. So for t uh, goes from 0 dt, let's go to 10. And uh, uh, let's solve this with an interval of delta t. Okay. And uh, let's set u0 is again equal to u of uh, what's size of u size of u is going to be okay so u of n transpose right so so we're setting we're taking the last uh, uh, time step solution of u and set it as u0 and uh, let's visualize x and minus 1 u0 let's draw now and uh, did I yeah okay so let's see so that's what we have right we have a wave equation advecting towards the right okay we can see there is a lot of error in this if you remember what's the behavior of the wave equation it should shift towards the right without changing its shape right and uh, now but this is a uh, uh, different so so let's actually do it a little bit slower because this is almost a uh, uh, too fast evaluate and uh, oh, is it delay or pause or sleep pause okay and in seconds that's actually uh, dt so let's see the solution in real time
So that's what it behaves. You can see like it doesn't maintain its shape, right? There is a lot of error. It kind of uh, uh, changed the shape pretty dramatically. Okay. So let's let's decrease our n by a, by another factor of uh, of ten and see what what we get. So we are going to reconstruct the matrix and right hand side. Uh, but I think we also have to reconstruct the uh, x and uh, reconstruct the u, right? And uh, we are going to redo our u naught. Now let's do this animation again. Uh, this is the pretty bad plot, and uh, we are going to be doing this animation again. Right, so here we see that we have a much better solution because we decreased our delta x by a lot. But again, you can see this error just keeps accumulating, right? So we, the, the original peak has a height of 1, and now it becomes like this, right? Okay, so, so this, is a, a, this is a lot worse than what we saw in the heat equation. So, so this is uh, basically the effect of this error accumulating. We have a marginally stable scheme here. Okay, and uh, let's see if we use forward order, what happens? Let's say if we have a forward order, what we would be doing is use, uh, so we have u0, and uh, if we have forward order, what we are doing is Let's say just the u0 is equal to u0 plus delta t times ddt at the vacuum e and u0, right? And this is forward order. And we are going to be plotting this uh, and draw now pause. Let's see. Before evaluation, let's go, yeah, uh, evaluate, evaluate selection. Yeah, that's what we get when you, we use forward order. So we quickly, just to look at this number here, 10 to the 60, 10 to the 70, 10 to the 80, just uh, keeps going. All right, so, so forward order is unstable for this one. If you, if, you decrease, if you decrease your delta t, it'll be better because, uh, um, because remember, if you look at the stability region, this guy is going to be multiplied by delta t. So the forward order stability region is going to be here. If you decrease the delta t, it's going to get closer and closer to the stability region of forward order. So the amplification is going to be less and less, but it'll never be, it'll never become equal or less than one. So it's still amplified, but at a slower rate if you decrease delta t.